Hey, it's Keith. So many people have asked me, you know, where's the before videos? So I'm gonna kind of go into that right now. I'm gonna show you some of the clips that I have. I'm gonna montage them together for you and go over like where the electrical is, where the plumbing is, where the cabinets are, where the seats used to be. And again, whether you're choosing an ambulance or any kind of van or I don't care if it's a boat or a tiny home, all of this give you some perspective on maybe an approach for your build and it'll help you kind of like sort through things and I'll show you how I sketch things out and how I put tape up and cardboard and it might be helpful for your build. So without further ado, let's go check it out. All right, here's the first view of the ambulance as I was doing my tour and trying to figure out, is this the one that I want? And you know, as you kind of walk through here and I've seen a few different ambulances and they had different configurations and setups. I was just trying to analyze things and you can see over here the seats and the bumpers and again, the uh, Disney theme here and the command center and there was a phone there you can probably see and I was playing with the switches and trying to see how everything worked now the lights came on and off and uh, you can see the old seats there which was really interesting and again the cabinets are pretty much the same and there was the port to the auction tank number one I don't know why I was bouncing around here I was just probably more curious than anything and I know the had lim the limited time that I had to look at it and it was running and it was in a parking lot and it was kind of loud. And then I took a peek at the electrical system. And then there's the auction tank up front. And you'll see in other videos of me kind of disassembling that. And then I turned on the suction. I wanted to see if that worked. And those all worked, which was really fascinating. I was like, they just kind of left all that stuff in there. And I was definitely surprised in a positive way that that stuff was left intact and it wasn't tore out and... And I checked the little receptacle to make sure that worked. And uh, heating and air conditioning worked, which was great. So that was a positive thing. And there was some stuff kind of all wrangled there. Um, the guy was actually doing some work on it when I had received it. And uh, he needed to get some work done. So I was checking to see if the thing blew air. It did. Open the cabinets. And I noticed he had a battery charger in here and he admitted that the batteries were dead and he bought some new batteries, which was great. And I was just uh, thoroughly like, wow, everything looked nice. And I was just opening drawers and just checking it all out. And um, immediately I was like, wow, this is a pretty clean ambulance. There was the uh, x-ray board and it was kind of like my first glimpse. And this was a thermometer they had like hanging and dangling there. I don't know why that was there, but I was... Uh, Surprised about that as well, and it was like stuck to the wall and it had fallen off. So this is kind of your first look at uh, my first look. And uh, lights were kind of warm when I touched them, and that's where the uh, liquid comes down for the IV tubes. So it was a great first tour. All right, in this video, you're going to see me kind of playing around with the prototype of the sofa couch now this is the ikea i think it's called neiman uh, forgive me on the spelling of that but you can see here i have the wood stakes on the legs that are tie wrapped on and i had some metal brackets down there and i was trying to see the mechanism and how it would work when it was in this fully flattened bed position so you'll see i do this like multiple times back and forth i want to see the clicking and the functioning of it and if you look underneath on the bottom left side, you'll see I cut the back legs off of it because I already made the commitment. And now I'm making these little adjustments to the left and to the right. I wanted to make sure it was going to pass things. And you, what you really can't see is over at the pass-through door over there where the water tank is now, there was like a little handle on that plexiglass. So I actually removed that. And again, you're seeing me making little adjustments here with the legs and just trying to make sure it all fits before I do the final click forward to actually, you know, hinge it back to its uh, position of being like a bed or being like a couch from being a bed. And I think right about here is where I click. I said, okay, it finally passes. I think it's passing. And again, it took a bunch of time to do that. And then once I had it kind of dialed in and I knew that it was going to slide easily and it wasn't going to encumber anything, then what did I do? You can see how I slid it back. I slid it back right here and I put it into place and I just gently slide it back. And that's where I figured out the next step. Okay, in this little piece, you'll see the final countdown here, or you can see when I pull it forward, 
I had that little piece of lumber in the back, I think it was about six or eight inches long. That was my stop so that I knew that when I slid it back where it needed to be, not just when the when we when he hinge it when you hinge it up there. Now if you watch when I push it back, I want to make sure also on the floor when it slid that it sat into the right spot as well. Okay, here's the final product with the blue tracks and the handles. Okay, in this video, you'll see this is where the refrigerator is and the cabinet, and those are the bolts that support the plate to the ground, to the frame. And I removed the four bolts, and then you can see where those bumpers are. And you can also see over here where the x-ray box was, where I took that out. And that's where eventually I ran the plumbing through that wall there. And again, everything was put on with Velcro, uh, which is pretty heavy duty Velcro. But I tried to do some measuring and try to figure out, you know, what am I going to fit in this space and then how am I going to be able to achieve what I wanted to achieve. And um, this was really important consideration for my little kitchen. Now you can see I took those quarter inch plate metal off and you can see the frame, the superstructure they put underneath the actual seats. And these basically covered, that was the uh, cover for the fuel fill. And... Everything else was plywood, and then again, that steel where they tap the, the steel and they, they drill and tapped it, but that's an amazing superstructure over the tires. Okay, now you're seeing I already mounted the cabinet. I gave it a just two screws to support it to the wall, but I wanted to set up the sink, and you'll see I tap over here where I was going to put the faucet. So again, this is all cardboard. And here's how I laid out the template for the cutout and also how I did it with the blue tape and I did two pilot holes first. Okay, here you'll see I put up the blue tape when I was trying to figure out the cabinet and the refrigerator. Okay, this is the plumbing box. This is the auction cabinet. You can see the unistruts that were there. I took off the yellow brackets already. You can see the bolts on the floor, but this is what I had to start with. And there's the auction and the air tanks and the air lines. And I just coiled them up top. Okay, you can see here where I removed the unistrut because I needed the depth inside the box for the water tank and for the plumbing and a few other things. This is why it's good to measure a couple times. Okay, and as you see here, I ran the hot and cold line behind the cabinet so it would stay inside. And I wanted to keep everything nice and toasty if it was in a cold climate. I actually removed the exhaust fan, which you can see here, and I moved an outside light, which you can see there. I ran the hot and cold all the way along behind the bumper. Then I poked it out through on the, the back side here. You can see the uh, ambulance stickers I still had on. I just mounted the gear and I ran it down through here. And there was the, the, the fresh air grills, which you see on the side over there. And that was the way that I was able to kind of keep everything inside where it worked out really well for long-term keeping things uh, warm. And you see those little brackets there I used. Eventually I used foam and wrap, tie wraps to keep them in there, but that was a way to approach this. Okay, here's the system. This is basically, I plumbed everything in. I kind of, in my brain, here's the valve, here's the switch, the pump, the accumulator, a fresh fill. I even did, I put the filter in, put the thing in before I put the filter in. Kind of want to test everything and make sure it worked. So it's pretty clean in here now. There's nothing really in there. I haven't gone on any adventure between this project and actually going on the adventure. So you can kind of see everything pretty straightforward how it is and how it worked and uh, again it's so hard because of the uh, phone or the digitization of things it's hard to even read that but it was 102 degrees I could tell you it's pretty damn hot and then I went over to go check and see how things were inside um, I went over to the sink here and again, you can see the blue tape there, and I still kind of kept everything open, and I turned the water on, it worked. I was like, yay, success. And this is kind of the process that you have to go through, and it was hot as I turned the uh, water to the hot side of the equation. Okay, you can see here I removed the yellow brackets, and this is just the unistrut with the top shelf up there that you probably remember I repurposed, and I put it down the bottom, and... I removed it right there and I put up the plywood and recessed the bolts that I had to so I could have no obstructions and I thought that was really important and a consideration. Then here you'll see I put up the blue tape and the exact dimensions of the device I was going to put in. 
And I thought that was also important. And then here I kind of went to more of a detailed video where I show where the batteries are going to go. And I was going to put the shelf in there and the future batteries, as you saw here, the fuse and the DC stuff. And you also see, you know, how providing some space, like where that wire is going to go as I was explaining it to myself, like thinking out loud, I guess would be the way I would describe it. And that was the, in, the inverter. And I was going to run the wires and I knew I needed to come through the wall over there to, to get the short plug and try and figure out how that was going to happen. And then I knew I was going to run the wires up into the links. So and then I knew where I was going to go with the shunt. And again, this is just drawing it on paper first. And I also knew kind of the wire sizes and stuff and how it was going to go into the DC-DC charger. I was going to come down through the grill over here. I knew I needed to get into there to get to the commander box. And I knew the space that was there. And then I had my AC box there. So it was going to be a 50 amp. So I had that on the wall. Again, that was the first iteration of it. But I made sure I made room. And I turned that thing around. And then the uh, charge controller. I knew what I was going to put in there. But again, I did the AutoCAD with the cardboard. The PV disconnect. And the DC... Uh, fuse box I didn't go with. I ended up putting everything inside and recycling what I had. Again, this was the first iteration, but it made me start thinking about it, which is, I think, the intention and purpose as you're kind of watching this kind of me narrate it, but really kind of think through what you're going to do before you bolt anything onto that wall or make any holes. Again, I knew I could reach through, put a cord in. I had lots of thoughts about how that was going to happen in case I needed to plug something in. And that was one of my strong considerations as well. And you see, I kind of come into here and I had removed the cage, which I'll show you in a second. So that was the original battery cable that went from the system. And that's where I was going to put that DC switch in there. And then the cord that was there that fed the house stuff, I was going to repurpose that, which was to plug in for stuff like my battery charger for my cordless drill. And I, the AMBO plugs, that's where that came from. So I knew I just had to unplug that. But I made sure I had spent some time tracing out the wires and no matter what you get, I mean, this is an ambulance, but whatever you decide to choose, if it's kind of a utility-like vehicle, you're going to spend some time tracing out some wires and figuring out, you know, how you're going to make it all work for your situation. Okay, this is the original inverter was. This is the Vanner, the 1,000 watt, and you can see how they had a nice cage in there to protect it. And in that lower tray, that's where the little oxygen tanks were, and that's where they had the air pumps for the air and for the oxygen. So I... You know, I knew that I couldn't reach in there to grab them, and I don't know why they made it like that, but that was the cord that plugged in for the plugs for the ambulance. So I took all that off, as you probably saw briefly in the last little piece. And then over here, when I took the, uh, the cage down, this is what was left. There was the cord, so I was able to kind of trace wires and pull on things and see where these things went, because it was really important to know. And uh, as you probably see in the videos, I trace them and uh, put blue tape on them and that was the big Anderson connector that they used which was great so they they really make heavy duty stuff and I keep going saying that over and over again but it's really one of the nicest things about the ambulance builds is that they're built to last and they're built really rugged and durable and then I found this wire that was taped off over here and I didn't know where the hell it went so I kind of had to trace it on my own it was an extra cable that they ran for the back lift, because I don't know that they knew exactly what they were going to do, but they just ran the wire anyway. So it's one of those things where they have a project and what's easier to do is just to kind of run the extra wires while it was being built versus kind of having to do it later, which would be more difficult. So another case study for, you know, having some room for expansion on your project. So you can think about that when you're doing your build. Okay, and for the sake of not keeping you here for the whole time, because everybody's seen a bunch of these videos and maybe I focus a lot on the electrical, but I just wanted to show you, like, again, the finished product, the before and after, and, you know, that was the children's toy box there, and the wiring, and the, I left the tool there, and the breaker, and why that's there, and the negative fuse block, and how things like the Victron Lynx system is there, and the MPPT, and you see me kind of falling around my finger the wires, and showing you how it works with Bluetooth and the grounding. And I think all this is really important. Again, you can watch a few of my slower videos to kind of understand this and how I talk about using a ferrule nut and the fuse. And again, I have another video about this you can go check out, but I wanted to kind of stitch it all together if this is going to be like a before and after video. And so you can kind of get a bigger picture of, 
you know, the effort that goes into designing a system to thinking about a system to, you know, stepping back and like, what is the, what's the final goal? What are you trying to achieve? And, and, you know, how can you fit all this in a small space? And I'm glad Ambulance has a big space because a lot of times, you know, if it's a small van or a pickup truck, there's not really a lot of space there. But with this, it gave me the liberty to have a lot of space, and a lot of flexibility. And for those that have again seen the videos, I made space here for two more batteries and I got my AC panel where most people put like an AC-DC combination box. I have the luxury of having you know, a lot more physical space for that. There's the ANL fuses, there's the mega fuses, and there's my cardboard again. I keep going back to that because people say, how the hell do you do this? Hopefully it's helpful to see this. Okay, so what did you think? Hope that gave you a high level view and a little bit of a detailed view of getting out the ruler, the pen and pad, the blue tape, the Sharpie, the cardboard, and kind of doing your own AutoCAD or Keith CAD, I called it, you know, in some of my videos, but to really demonstrate, illustrate that you can do this too. Take some time, but I think you'll enjoy the process and you'll enjoy the journey. There'll be days where you're going to be frustrated where you don't know what to do and just step back, maybe put that down for a day and go back to it the next day and think through, you know, how do you want it to be? You know, as I mentioned, probably the first video, I decided to put the couch in first because I realized I want to sit on the couch or sleep on the couch. That was the most important thing. I knew that the seat that was there in the command center was going to leave that, but I did initially take it out so I could do some work on the vehicle. But, you know, give yourself permission to experiment and to have some fun with it. Just like I'm sitting out here, originally I thought, oh, I'm going to take this ramp off. I said, no, I can use this to sit and talk to you today or watch the sunset or cook on this. So. I would say don't be in a real big rush to tear everything out if you don't, that's not what you want to do. But again, give yourself permission to leave things intact or if you really feel like you want to rip everything out, great. Just keep in mind that it's going to take you longer to finish your project and longer to be on the road. And I think, again, everybody wants to enjoy that process of you know doing the build and also the process of being on a journey in this life. So anyway, if you have any questions, please leave some comments below the video and I'll help you if I can. Have a great day.